Thank you, Stacy. Well, good morning. My name is Dave Freeman, and I have begun to follow Jesus, and I am depending on the Spirit of Jesus in my journey. All summer, we've been discussing uh, that the fact that the early followers of Jesus were called followers of the way, and we have been discussing what it means for us here in 2018 to also be followers of the way. And this morning, as we begin the month of September, we want to start as a church family with uh, sharing communion together. These trays at the front contain small pieces of bread and small cups containing juice, which represent the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. They remind us that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And as we eat the bread and as we drink the cup, we are recognizing that when Jesus died, he died not only for the whole world, but for us personally. We call this the Lord's table. And meeting at the Lord's table is one of the things that the followers of Jesus have done for over 2,000 years. The way of Jesus can be summarized in a simple statement. Living like Jesus, for Jesus, in the power of the Spirit of Jesus. Every time that the followers of Jesus meet at the Lord's table, they are affirming that this is their goal. They are saying, as we eat this bread and as we drink this cup, we are declaring that we want to live like Jesus, for Jesus, in the power of the Spirit of Jesus. Note that we're not saying that we have this down perfectly. We are not saying that we never go off track or never go slower than we think we should. After all, as we have said, the way of Jesus is a journey, not a destination. Although we may have started our journey many years ago, or perhaps for some of us more recently, it is still a journey. We take one step at a time, and as you know, journeys do not always happen in the fast lane, especially on long weekends. Our hope is that over the summer, you have begun to increasingly identify yourself as someone who's a traveler on the way of Jesus. And to help us on the journey, we've been looking at a number of signposts to keep us on track. So this morning, as we take communion together, we are affirming that we want these statements that we have been looking at to be true of us. So let's go through these sayings together. We began with this one. I have begun following Jesus and am depending on the Spirit of Jesus in my journey. Let's all read that together. I have begun following Jesus and am depending on the Spirit of Jesus in my journey. So if this is your desire, well then come to the table. Another signpost. I am being sent by Jesus to bless others and invite them to follow him. Let's say that together. I am being sent by Jesus to bless others and invite them to follow him. If you agree that Jesus is sending you to bless other people, then come on down to the table. Here's another one. I'm learning to love God and to love others. Let's say that together. I am learning to love God and to love others. Note that it doesn't say, I always love God and I always love others. It doesn't say that. It says, I am learning. So are you still learning what it means to love God and love others? Then come down to the table. Here's another signpost. I am learning the teachings of Jesus. Let's say that together. I am learning the teachings of Jesus. Again, this doesn't mean that you know everything. It affirms that you're still learning. So if you're a learner then come to the table. Last week, we looked at this signpost. I am participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. Let's say that together. I am participating in a community of followers of Jesus on mission to the world. Certainly, as we line up with one another in a couple of moments, waiting to take our turn to take the bread and take the cup, we are affirming that we're not doing this alone. We are participating in a community of followers of Jesus. In a moment, the worship band is going to lead us in a song, and as we sing, come forward, take a piece of bread, and take one of the cups, then return to your seat. There's gluten-free bread available at each station, and the benevolent fund boxes are also available, so if you'd like to make a donation, we use the, the money to assist those who are in financial need in our community. And once you have the bread and the cup, take it back to your seat, where you can eat and drink when you are ready. Then join the worship band as they sing. And parents, we'll leave it to you to 
coach your children through participation in the Lord's table. If you think that they understand what they're doing and they're ready to do it, feel free to have the children participate or tell them that this is just for big people. It's your call uh, how you do that. You'll note that there are four sets of bread and cups, uh, one for each section. So you each section gets your own. And just so that we won't be bumping into each other, I have a suggestion as to how we will do traffic flow. So we're going to be standing in a minute. When it's time to come forward for communion, I invite these two sections to come toward the middle, come down together, and then split each to your own section, and then return. These folks will return down the middle aisle, and these folks will return back on the outside aisle. If you were paying attention, you know exactly what it's going to work like for you. You're going to come into this middle aisle. You're going to go to your station and then re, re, uh, go back that way and go back this way. So the two middle sections will return through the middle aisle and the two outside sections will return through the outside aisle. And if we all work in the same direction, hopefully we won't kill one another in the process of communing together. The followers of the way of Jesus also share a common belief about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We call it the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand together and affirm the Apostles' Creed, and then I will pray, and then you can come forward. The Apostles' Creed, say it, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this table to which we come as followers of the way. May this bread and this cup remind us that we too benefit from the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come to the table as the worship team leads us in song. Last week, we discussed the fact that followers of the way of Jesus are able to say, I am participating in a community of followers of Jesus who are on mission to the world. And the Shelley family have been walking that journey for the last year, so I'm going to ask Matt and Amanda to come join me here, and I'm just going to ask them a few questions about the journey they've been on for the last year. So, Amanda, let's start by just asking you, what's it been like, what's been going on in your family over the last few months? Um, well, we have a son, Emmett, who many of you have prayed for. We're thankful for that. Um, but he was diagnosed in December with something called Hirschsprung disease. And Hirschsprung is basically when he was growing uh, in utero, the nerves never grew at the bottom part of his colon, his large bowel, um, which basically means that once the poop gets there, it stops. And so we talk about poop a lot in our house. <laughs> <laughs> the poop emoji is basically our family emblem. And actually, of note, after the first service he was here for, I asked him, were you embarrassed for me to talk about poop in front of everyone? He's like, nah, poop happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. Um, but um, he's, um, he's struggled since birth and uh, had to take a boatload of medications to um, allow him to do a normal bodily function. And uh, despite advocating through our family physicians, um, it took a very long time to be diagnosed, and, and it really resulted in me cornering one of our trauma surgeons at my work and saying, I need your help. And, you know, God just put so many people in our path. He, um, eventually, we made our way to London, and um, Emmett was diagnosed in December, and he's um, so far had three surgeries. He has two more to go um, for treatment of this. Hirschsprung's is tricky because it's quite rare. It's only one in 5,000 births, and... Um, with kids, when it's rare, we heard over and over, oh, it's probably not, it's so rare. And uh, as a nurse, I always tell the residents at my work, you know, when you hear hoofbeats, you think horses, not zebras. But uh, as we learned with Emmett, we are raising a zebra. <laughs> so as you look back over the last few months, uh, what's been the hardest part for you as a family? So uh, we, we discussed this before getting up here, of course, and 
I couldn't nail one thing down in specifically. I mean, we've had a lot of challenges that we've had to adapt to um, just in everyday life. But, um, you know, just through the, the help from our church community, the kids' school community, from just all the communities, it's been a big help. Um, and part of it is just that uh, it's been a year-long process, and at the end of this, at the end of all the surgeries, there's no guarantee he's going to be normal. There will still be challenges um, that he will spend the rest of his life uh, dealing with. And for us, too, Emmett is one of four, so we have three other children who also need our time and attention, and on a good day, that's divided amongst four, but <laughs> this has really shifted the balance this last year. So... Uh during the time you've been part of a community of followers of Jesus. So tell us about what that's been like for you. Um, just overwhelming. Um, as I mentioned previously there, it's, there's been so much overwhelming support from everybody, um, from alpha groups, from um, small groups, or small church, and, um, and just, you know, the large church as well. Our, the school community, the you know, just everywhere we we turn, there seems to be more and more support, and uh, uh, just for me especially, but for the whole family as well, it's been an incredibly overwhelming experience. Yeah, I agree. It really has. And what sticks in my mind is the day that I had to sit down with Emmett and explain what an ostomy was. Which I mean, how do you explain that to a five-year-old? And uh, why he had to get it. Um, and he was very quiet and he turned to me and he said, my life is changing. And what do you say? Because it was. And I just sat there with him and prayed, God, please, I need your help through this. We need your help. We can't do this alone. And honestly, within one minute, our home phone rang, which in our house is rare because no one calls our home phone. And uh, I answered it and it was Michelle from the church. And she said, I just heard, what can I do to help? And God has followed through with that. Everywhere we turn, someone is in our path. Every time we're breaking as a couple, a family, there's been someone there to lift us up and support us with meals following Emmett's, Emmett's um, last surgery, our small group praying for him, um, the kids' church sending a beautiful poster card to uh, lift his spirits after the surgery, just running into all of you who, you know, give us hugs when we need them. Um, it's been overwhelming. And as Matt said, our school too. Um, the kids go to school in Cuba and uh, the whole school supported him. He got cards from every class in the school um, when he left for his surgery. His class teacher, Ms. Fitzhenry, actually invited an ostomy group in to come and explain what it was for the kids so Emmett would feel comfortable coming back after the surgery. And uh, Hollister, not the clothing company, but the ostomy company, um, they actually sent a package and all the kids in his class decorated an ostomy bag, which they hung up in his room as a banner of support during that time. Um, his, t his sister's class made a banner that we took to the hospital with us with personal messages. It was just incredible. Phone calls, texts, the principal texted me every single day to check how he was doing as well as my work community. Um, we're you know, a big family in ICU, and when we were at the Ronald McDonald House, there was actually a note under our door that our stay had been paid for by my ICU family, and a donation had been made in Emmett's name, and it just was overwhelming and so appreciated. Well, that is awesome. Well, last June was Emmett's sixth birthday, and you decided to use that as an opportunity to be on mission. Tell us what you did. So we took the opportunity to have a fundraising um, a birthday party here at the church. We had uh, bouncy castles and, and the like, and and um, we were able to get uh, use that money to support the Ronald McDonald House. And I'll let my wife here. Um, <laughs> so we uh, we decided we were going to do this. Um, we invited the entire church and the entire school, which in retrospect was a little ambitious, um, but it worked out so well. Um, we had many people attend, but um, we also raised um, on that date $1,125 in cash. And with the online donations, it's almost $2,000 plus a van full of goodies that the house needed, snacks for parents, <coughs> cleaning supplies, books and the like. Um, and we were able to take this to the house to bless them. 
just to give a little perspective, um, it costs approximately $170 um, for a family to stay at the Ronald McDonald House for one night. And so with Emmett's party, we were able to support a family for a week-long stay, which sometimes is only a small glimpse of how long they're actually there, depending on the, the problem, to be with their loved one. That's awesome, Matt and Amanda. Thank you very much for sharing. You might not have realized it, but you've been uh, living for Jesus, like Jesus, in the power of the Spirit of Jesus. Let's thank uh, Matt and Amanda. Thank you. All summer we've been living, or looking at signposts on the way of Jesus. And I'm grateful to the Evangelical Missionary Church for developing these signposts that we've been looking at. The Evangelical Missionary Church is a sister family of churches that are very much like ours, and they've gladly shared these insights that I've been able to share with you this week. You can go onto their website if you're interested and learn a little bit more. There are a total of seven, actually, of these signposts, and we've looked at five. One we have skipped goes like this. I am becoming like Jesus in my attitudes, behavior, character. Let's say that together. I am becoming like Jesus in my attitudes, behavior, character. You might say that these are the ABCs, attitudes, behaviors, character, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And actually, we didn't really skip the signpost, although we didn't talk about it explicitly, because Pastor Steve did a whole series on character back in May and in June. So today is our last day of looking at the signposts on the way of Jesus. Our summer series is over. This means that summer is almost over. Everyone say, boo, boo. <laughs> Thank you, kids. That was great. Does that make you feel better now? Mm -hmm. Actually, fall is a wonderful time of year. For one thing, school starts. Everyone says, yay. Yay. <laughs> the yays have it. And another thing, Christmas musical starts. Everyone say, yay. yay. And we are excited about what God's going to do this year in the Christmas musical and all the other things that are happening. Lots of groups are starting. So many of you have completed a connecting card last week and indicated your interest in baptism or membership or in connecting with a group or a team. And to be honest with you, we have not had time to follow up with all of you. But don't worry. We will. Thanks for your patience. Well, today we're going to look at our last signpost. Here it is. I am helping others, and others are helping me become a reproducing follower of Jesus. Let's say that together. I am helping others, and others are helping me become a reproducing follower of Jesus. Now, what do we mean when we talk about a reproducing follower of Jesus? Well, one of the things that indicates that something is living is that it reproduces. What's this? Kids, tell me what this is. An apple. And an apple contains seeds. And if you plant an apple seed, you eventually get an apple tree. And that apple tree produces what? More apples. Kids, what's this? You can't have it. It's mine. And a watermelon contains seeds. And if you plant a watermelon seed, you get a watermelon vine. And guess what? That vine produces more Watermelons, that's right. And watermelons produce watermelons. Apples produce apples. People produce people. If you're a kid here, put up your hand. There you go, put up your hand if you're a kid. Yeah, there you go. So guess what? Your parents are people who reproduced, and here you are. You're not an apple. You're not a watermelon. You're a person. Everybody say, yay! Yeah, we're glad that you're here. <laughs> so if apples are produced from apples and watermelons are produced from watermelons and people are produced from people, then how are followers of Jesus produced? From followers of Jesus. That's right. It's just a natural thing for followers of Jesus to invite other people to become followers of Jesus. Remember, that's what Andrew did. Andrew was one of the first people to follow Jesus. According to the Gospel of John... The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus, because that's what followers of Jesus do. We bring our family and our friends to Jesus, hoping that they also will become followers 
of Jesus. Jesus actually called it something. He called it fishing for people. One day, Jesus saw Andrew and Simon in their fishing boat. They'd been fishing for fish. And Jesus said to them, come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Matthew also tells us that after the resurrection, just as Jesus was getting ready to return to heaven, he said to his followers, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So if a disciple is called by Jesus to make other disciples, then every disciple should actually be a discipler. By definition, a follower of Jesus is a reproducing follower of Jesus. Apples produce... Apples produce... Watermelons produce... Followers of Jesus produce? That's right. Now let's go back to our signpost and look at that middle section. I'm helping others, and others are helping me become a reproducing follower of Jesus. Remember last week I talked about the importance of being part of a community of followers of Jesus. We need a community around us who are supporting us on our journey on the way of Jesus. Now before we look at this in detail, I want to show you a chart. This chart is called the Engel scale because a man by the name of James Engel created the original version. It simply shows the possible steps that someone takes in order to become a growing and reproducing follower of Jesus. So if you start at the bottom, although it's presented as a series of steps, it may be that someone is standing on two steps at a time, but nonetheless, it does give us a helpful sense of the progression that most people follow. So, At the bottom, let's say that there is someone who does not know that there's one true God who created all things and who loves them. What's their next step? Well, they need to begin to have some awareness of what God is like and the fact that God exists. Then, let's say they have uh, contact with some Christians because Christians are able to tell them about the God of the Bible and talk to them about the Jesus of the Bible who is God. And they might begin to then have an interest in Jesus, which means that they'll begin to investigate who Jesus is and move on from that. They'll begin to grasp the truth about Jesus and understand implications of the truth of Jesus. And eventually, they will begin to say, yeah, you know, I think this makes sense. I think this stuff is true. And they'll begin to accept the fact that, yeah, there are implications. If Jesus is God, then, wow, that means there's some things in my life have to change, and ultimately they come to a point of decision, a decision whether or not to surrender their lives to the Jesus that they believe is God. And after they do that, they begin to gain confidence in their decision, they begin to see God working in their life, and they see some of the changes in their lives, they continue to learn the basics of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, they learn the Christian disciplines of prayer and Bible study and sharing their faith with others, and this this Uh, begins a lifelong journey then of of following the way of Jesus one step at a time. Now, before we go any further, I want you to identify yourself on that Engel scale. What step or steps do you think that you're on right now? Just take a minute, look at that. And here's the important question I'd like to ask you this morning. Have you passed through step number 10? which is highlighted in yellow. Have you decided to surrender your life to Jesus? If not, what's the issue that keeps you from doing that? Is it because you need more information? Is it because you don't fully understand the implications of what it would mean and you're still working that through? Is it simply that you do not want to surrender your life to somebody else, even if that person is the Lord of the universe? You see, Do you have someone who is helping you work through the issues that you are working through? Who is helping you become a follower of Jesus? Kids? Perhaps it's your parents. Or perhaps it's your leaders in kids' church. Teens and adults? Perhaps it's a friend. Perhaps your youth group or a small group that you've been part of. Our Alpha group is specifically designed to help someone work through their questions about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Here's the bottom line. When Jesus calls people to follow him, he is asking them to surrender to him. This whole summer, we have been discussing what it means to be a follower of Jesus. 
When Jesus called Andrew and Simon, they left their fishing boat behind and followed him. Is today the day that you need to leave something behind and decide to follow Jesus? You might be six years old or 60 years old. It doesn't matter. For if you're saying, yes, Pastor Dave, today is the day I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to lead you in a short prayer. This is not a magic prayer. The decision to surrender is more important than the words you say. But perhaps these words express your decision today. I'm going to pray a phrase, and if that phrase expresses what you want to tell Jesus, then repeat it to yourself and to Him. You don't need to say it out loud. So let's pray together. If you're ready to follow Jesus, pray with me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. I confess that I have sinned against you. I desire to turn away from my sin. Thank you for forgiving me. I choose to surrender my life to you. Jesus, I choose to follow you. Amen. Now, if you did that, if you prayed that prayer with me, then what's your next step? First thing to do is to tell someone who's been helping you that you've decided to follow Jesus. Then join a group of people who will help you continue to grow. I was so busy last week describing some of the specialized groups that we have, groups for runners and for parents and for women and for men, that I forgot to mention that we even have groups for people who have nothing in common with one another except that they want to help each other grow as followers of Jesus. Imagine that. They want to help one another become reproducing followers of Jesus. Also, a great way to grow is to join a team that is involved in ministry. For instance, becoming part of our kids' church team will help you learn lots about the basics of being a Christian as you teach the kids about what it means to become a follower of Jesus. So you just tell us what kind of group or what kind of team you'd like to connect with, and we will try to match you up. Well, let me unpack the last part of this signpost. Actually, it's the first part of the phrase, I am helping others, and others are helping me become a reproducing follower of Jesus. Remember that a disciple is a discipler. Jesus asks us to fish for people. Followers of Jesus reproduce followers of Jesus. But you might say, how can I do that? Well, let me give you three suggestions. First, the most important thing you can do is to be a follower of the way of Jesus. If you are not a watermelon, you cannot produce watermelons. And if you don't live like a follower of Jesus, don't expect to reproduce other followers of Jesus. Remember that a follower of the way of Jesus lives like Jesus, for Jesus, in the power of the Spirit of Jesus. That's the first step, to live like that, wholeheartedly, unreservedly, as best you can. Secondly, live out the signpost that we looked at a few weeks ago. I am being sent by Jesus to bless others and invite them to follow Him. Remember I introduced you to an acrostic used by Dave Ferguson to help get on your mind what does it mean to bless somebody. And kids, you can do these things as well. The B, begin with prayer. Start praying for the people you know. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your neighbors. Ask God to show you how you can bless them. Then L, listen and look. Pay attention to what's going on in their lives so that you can understand where they're at and what they need. E stands for eat together. I love this part. You know, we've lost the art of hospitality, but eating together is a powerful moment of human connection, even if it's just for a coffee. And kids, you can eat together too. For instance, at school, who do you eat your lunch with? Do you find somebody who's your friend, or do you find somebody who's not yet your friend but needs a friend? Do you eat lunch with them? That's a way of blessing them. The first S stands for serve. If you've been paying attention to what is happening in their lives, you will be able to find a way to serve them. And then the second S is this, share your story. As you get to know people and as they get to know you, your story will become simply a natural part of your relationship. If your whole life is oriented around your journey with Jesus, then talking about Jesus is just going to be natural for you. 
and your friends will figure out, oh, Jesus is important to this person. They might say, well, that's okay for you. It's not okay for me, but that doesn't matter. They just need to know that it's important for you. That's the starting point. Thirdly, while you are living like Jesus and while you are blessing others, then invite people to take the next step. Let me ask you, who are you discipling? Now, often when people ask that question, they're asking, who's the specific person that you have a special relationship with that you call a discipling relationship? Have you ever heard that idea, uh, you know, that you disciple sort of one person at a time? The expectation is that you are meeting one-on-one with someone and going through a specific curriculum or Bible study to help them grow as a Christian. And often the model for that kind of relationship is Paul and Timothy, where Paul spent extra time with Timothy and, and uh, helped him grow as a Christian. Well, I would rather ask a different question. Instead of asking you, who are you discipling? I would like to ask you, who are you not discipling? You see, everyone is somewhere along their journey toward Jesus, and you can help any one of those people move forward in their relationship. You see, every relationship that you have is a potential discipling relationship. If you just look for a Timothy, you might miss out on the other people that God is calling you to help in their journey toward becoming a reproducing follower of Jesus. Here's the thing to remember. Not everyone that you know is on the same step of their journey. Let's go back to the Engelskel. The question we need to ask is, where is this person on their journey And what is the next step that I can invite them to take? For instance, right now, think of a family member or a friend. So somebody popped into your mind right away. Just hang on to that person and then ask yourself, where where do you think they are in this journey? Are they on step one? Uh, Do they they believe in God or do they think that God is just a fairy tale? Do they understand anything about the life and teaching of Jesus? Who do they think Jesus is? Do they think he's a fictional character or someone who actually lived? Do they think that he was a great teacher or that he was a misguided rebel? Do they believe that Jesus rose from the dead? You see, you don't need to invite them to go from step one to step 16 and more all at once. You just need to invite them to take the next step that is appropriate to where they are at this moment in time. And if they're not ready to take the next step, no sweat, just be patient. You only need to keep praying for them, blessing them, and at the appropriate time, inviting them to take the next step. And what you may discover is that Jesus has been using you to move them one step at a time toward becoming a reproducing follower of Jesus. And that, my friends, is what the way of Jesus is all about. The worship team is going to come forward and lead us in several more songs, and then the prayer team is available here at the front to pray with you during the time of singing. Join me as we pray. Father, first of all, thank you that you called us to be your follower. And thank you that you have been inviting us to take one more step toward you. Thank you for the people who have been helping us on this journey toward becoming a reproducing follower of Jesus. Thank you that the way of Jesus is available to every one of us. And thank you that as we help each other on the way of Jesus, you will do some amazing things in our lives and through our lives. And we're so grateful for that. We worship you. We honor you. We surrender our lives to you, Lord Jesus. Amen.